Artists love making color charts. It will help you learn about the colors on your palette and also explore colors you might want to use in your paintings. In the first two charts of this module, you'll lay out all of your colors individually from light to dark and then make a color wheel so you can see each color's relationship to another. The colors you purchased for this class are primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. When they are mixed together, they create secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. The six colors on your supply list are these primary and secondary colors. When primary and secondary colors are mixed together, you get a group of six colors called tertiary colors. It's easier to understand all of this when you look at the relationships in a color wheel. While you can easily purchase or Google a color wheel, it's most useful to make one based on the colors that you'll be working with on your own palette. This is also important because transparent watercolor is not as saturated as other types of paint. Start by dividing your page into two sections. One 10 by 10 inches will be used for the color wheel. The other side will be used to lay out all of your colors from light to dark. This is what it will look like when both the color chart and the color wheel are finished. Now I'll show you how to make the first one. Get a nice pool of color and then just take the brush and move it down the page all the way until you eventually run out of color. Then you can see how the color looks both lighter and darker. Repeat this with all of the colors on your palette. Make sure you completely clean your brush between each one. Sometimes you also have to clean the palette in between if one color starts to run into another. In addition to the primary and secondary colors on the supply list is also one earth tone, burnt sienna. Now I will show you how to make the color wheel. To get the proper structure for the color wheel, you'll need to divide it into 12 even sections, like the face of a clock. To make this as accurate as possible, I downloaded the template. You can find this template in the course materials for Module 1. It's important that this be accurate for some of the later color charts we'll be working on. The colors need to be across from each other. The template is 8 inches, but I drew my circle a little larger. You can draw it as large as will fit on your page. Put your primary colors in first, yellow at 12, red at 4, and blue at 8. Your secondary colors, orange, purple, and green, are at 2, 6, and 10. The primary and secondary colors you already have with your tubes of paint, so you'll be able to enjoy mixing the six tertiary colors. Each tertiary color is made from a primary color and the secondary color closest to it. Yellow orange or amber, orange red or vermilion, red purple or magenta, purple blue or violet, blue green or teal, and green yellow or lime. While you can buy tubes of all of these colors, it's good practice to try to mix them. Since watercolor is a very delicate, transparent medium, if you want any of your color swatches to be darker, you'll need to let the first layer dry completely and then put on a second layer. I hope you've enjoyed this opportunity to get to know the colors on your palette and how they relate to each other on the color wheel. I put the numbers over the swatches of colors for the purpose of this video only. When you make your color chart, you can make your color notations on the white paper to the inside of the color chart so you don't have to cover up the colors themselves. Before you start mixing colors to make your color chart, I have some advice on how to best use your palette when mixing paint. I'm putting some fresh paint on my palette, but you'll notice there's also paint on my palette that's set up that's been dry for a while, but it can still be used. The fresh paint tends to be a little sticky and gooey when you first put it down. That means if you mix another color with it together, it's hard to clean off the surface, particularly if you want to use that color again and it has another color mixed in it. But you'll notice with the paints that have already set up or dried a bit, I can easily take clear water and clean the top of them to get any other paint off that I might have put there to mix two colors together. 
at the same time and can also clean off the surface of the palette. You'll need to do this quite frequently when you're mixing colors together to clean one color off of another color to make sure you always have the pure color that you're mixing together with another color. These palettes with large flat mixing surfaces are really valuable because you can freely mix colors together. There's also plenty of room on the palette if in another part of the palette you want to put fresh dabs of paint together for the purposes of mixing together, but there's no reason to have to clean off the old paint. It washes well just by putting the palette under a sink also. You'll find your own way and how it works for you best. These are just a few tips of how I work with my own palette.